What's up friends, it's Valentin Kosenko and today's video will be taking a look at power bins as well as adjustment clips and how you can use them to save presets in DaVinci Resolve. Because as of DaVinci Resolve 16.1 there is no other option to do that and if you want to save your presets you have to use power bins. Let's roll that intro and then we'll jump straight into DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you how everything works. For the purpose of this video, I've chosen one of my older projects, which I think is a good example of what you can do with power bins. And because many of my videos have a very similar structure where I have an intro and I also have an outro and also some other assets that I'm using on a regular basis, power bins are making my life so much easier. And by the way, if you're doing this for the first time and you haven't used power bins before, then you probably have to go into DaVinci Resolve, click on view and then click on show power bins down here. So then if you take a look at your media pool, you'll be able to access your power bins. And in your case, there should be no other folders yet. But as you can see, I have a small folder structure here already that helps me organize all of my often used clips. So if we go into this folder right here, which by the way is still not that full because I've just recently reinstalled my windows, then we can see that I have my intro in here, I have my logo and also my outro. And if you wanna edit in there, all you gotta do is go into your media pool and put it into the folder, or you can also put anything from your timeline inside of your power bin folders. But there's actually more you can do with power bins. You can not only put source media inside of it, but you can also put adjustment clips or fusion composites inside of it, which is really helpful if you want to save transition presets or something like that. So what I've done is I've added an adjustment layer here. And by the way, if you don't know how to do this, you have to click on your effects library, then click on toolbox and scroll to the very bottom, and then you'll find adjustment clip right here. And you can just put it on your timeline like that and the next thing I have done is I went into the fusion tab and I have a very simple node structure here with transform and directional blur and as you can see we have a transition right here which swipes from the left to the right and I've also added a small whoosh sound effect right here and now the great thing about this is that you can just go ahead and copy that transition into your power bins so that you can use it as often as you want and in any project you want. And by the way, as you can see, you can put stars on some of your toolbox items and they will pop up in your favorites on the left hand side here, but you cannot save any presets. So power bins are the only way to do that right now. And on top of that, if you haven't worked with adjustment layers, what they do is they affect every clip that is below it. So in this case, as you can see, there is a transform and a directional blur which affects the clips below it. And what it's gonna do is, it's gonna swipe to the right and increase the blur until it's at the maximum right here in between both clips. And then the blur will slowly disappear again until it gets into the right position here. But when it comes to adjustment clips, you can not only use the Fusion tab, but you can also make color adjustments. So if you'll be blurring parts in every single of your videos, then you can of course also use an adjustment clip for that. Let's click on this one right here and go into the color tab. And then you can see that I have an open effects right here, which is the Gaussian blur. And I've also used a power window here to mark that area. And what it does is it affects the clips below it. So as you can see, the video below that is getting blurred in that part of the video. But you can also put other effects on it. You can go into the curves and you can make a contrast. And as you can see, it's changing only that part of the window. And you can of course also use that for LUTs if you want to make a look across all your videos and you don't want to make all the adjustments on your single clips right here, then this is a great way of doing it. You can also save any other item from the toolbox into your power bins, like texts, for example. So this is a really great thing if you want to save time in DaVinci Resolve. And by the way, if you haven't watched one of my last tutorials on DaVinci Resolve keyboard shortcuts, then you should definitely go ahead and check that out. And I'm sure your video editing speed will increase by at least two times. But if we once again take a look at the power bins, we can of course create folders inside of here or bins as DaVinci Resolve calls it and you can give them a name and organize all of your assets so that you can then easily access all of it in every single project you have. One more thing I wish you could do with these power bins is save compound clips inside of them but certainly this is not possible. Let me just quickly show you. This would be useful for example in this situation where I have the transition and also the sound effect so that when I put it back on my timeline I have both the transition effect and the sound effect at the same time and I don't have to search for the sound effect first but maybe they'll add it in the future. I hope so, but I'll quickly show you that it does not work right now. So if you mark both clips and make a right click, new compound clip, and let's say transition slide right 10 frames, then for whatever reason, you cannot save that in here because it says Resolve is unable to place multicam compound clips, fusion clips, and timelines into power bins. But maybe this is something we can do in the future. This would be really helpful as well. 
because then you could have complex compound clips inside of your power bins to use them for other projects. That would be so great, but as of now, it's not possible. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to power bins and adjustment layers. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, make sure to leave a thumbs up. And if you didn't like this video, then you can of course leave a thumbs down, but then you owe me a comment and tell me what I can do better next time. And if you're new to this channel and you're interested in videos like these, then please go ahead and subscribe and click on the bell icon to get all of the notifications. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.